finds others standing idle. And he says unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Did you hear that? Amen. Why are you still standing here idle? He went out the first hour and he got him some workers. But at the third hour, he realized it wasn't enough. He realizes at the sixth hour, he sees where the sun is at. He sees where the day is at. He sees that the day is about gone. You remember when Jesus said, Night soon cometh when no man will work. That's what this husbandman of this vineyard, Brother Dave, was seeing. That's right. Night's coming. Amen. We can't work, Brother Sleece, when it gets night. Mm. There will come a time when the door is shut. And if you've got your spiritual ear open, you can hear the creaking of the hinge Come on. as the door begins to shut. And if you really get in the Spirit, you will realize the urgency of the message that I'm preaching to you this morning, that it is the 11th hour, and we still have people standing around, and they have done so all day. Yeah. Oh, they've been in the way for 40 years, and that's exactly right. They've been in the way for 40 years. They ain't done nothing. They ain't said nothing. They haven't glorified the Father in one thing they have done, because all they have done sit around the table and feel their gut right. instead of working in the field. Amen. I hope y'all can feel some of what I'm preaching this morning. The eleventh hour, uh -huh. Jesus said the night soon cometh when no man will work. So this husbandman sees the night coming. Yeah. He sees daylight fastly fading away. Uh -huh. And he goes out at the eleventh hour and he finds some men and he says, what are y'all doing standing here? All day long, yeah. idle. Right. Now who knows? This might have been some that he saw the first time he's out there. Right. When he said he's looking for workers, some of them went, some of them stayed. Yeah. Well, I'll wait till the next offer. He ain't offered me enough, enough money. Hmm. That's one of the reasons some people don't get into ministry. Don't offer enough money. Yeah. Hey Amen. Are you kidding me? Can I give up my? Hundred thousand dollar a year job to to, to preach. Mm -hmm. My goodness, mm -hmm. brother Hinton used to say that the pay is not much in this and right now, but the benefits are out of this world. Amen. Oh, mm -hmm. About the eleventh hour, he went out mm -hmm. and found others standing idle. Yeah. And he said, "Why stand you here all the day?" Now, how do you know they've been there all day idle? Think about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe, just maybe. When he went out that morning looking for laborers, he saw some of the same old guys. When he said, hey, I got, I got a job I'm offering it, penny a day, a bunch of them got up and took off. If it's the day, they'd all jump in the back of a pickup truck and headed down the road. Amen. Right. Probably wouldn't able to speak English. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's right. That's about the only ones you can get to work. Amen. We can ground complain about the illegal aliens and about those that don't speak English working. That's about the only ones you can get to work. That's right. Because Americans have become so fat and lazy. They want the government to support them. Amen. Oh my goodness. That went over like a lead balloon. <clears throat> so he hollers for these guys and then he goes back, what, the third hour and he goes back the sixth hour and he goes back the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. Then he goes back the eleventh hour and he says to these guys, why are you standing here all day idle? Mm -hmm. And their response is, they say it to him because no man hath hired us. In other words, nothing for us to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. And according to the Bible, it teaches us that they went. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said to his servants, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And he paid all of them the same thing. Yeah. Some of them got mad because they said, I've been working for a long time for you. Mm -hmm. I started this morning at the crack of dawn. And this guy that came in around 4 o'clock, he getting paid the same amount of money I did. And you know what he says to him? He says, you agreed to work for that. Take what you've agreed to and go. Amen? It ain't too late for you to get in on the work of God. Amen? Amen. It's not too late. And we're all going to receive a reward for the work that Amen. we do. Amen? That's right. Every one of us is going to receive a reward according to our works. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Laborers called to the work. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Maybe it was the call from Virginia that got me stirred up so much. All right. Amen. Come on. 
Maybe it was the call from Virginia that got me to thinking about how much work there is to be done and how few laborers and how few help there is. I don't know what it got stirred up, but I can tell you this. It sure made all the nights that I work until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning working on the home church CDs and the newsletters and the websites and the radio station. It sure made all of that work fade into comparison to the reward that I got when that little woman called me and said, Hey, I'm listening to the radio station and I'm being blessed. Amen. It didn't bother me at all then how many hours I worked to get it out there. It didn't bother me at all then how much money I put in the offering plate to get it done. And if you get the same kind of vision, the same kind of burden, and realize that what's going on here doesn't stop here. It goes on farther than you'll ever expect it. Amen. That woman told me, she said, you'll never know how many people you are touching. And I believe it. Praise God. Because most people, like the lepers, yeah. Jesus healed ten and one came back to thank Him. That's the way most of us are. Amen. They used to say for every one that you hear from, mm -hmm. there's thousands out there that you don't. Yeah. And I can believe that. Yeah. Amen. When's the last time that you ever called a minister and said, you're a blessing to me? Every one of us mm. fail at that. Amen? Right. Don't do it near as much. Amen. So God's looking for workers this morning. Yes, sir. Amen? <laughs> Go back to what Brother Wayne said. Starting position is on your knees. Right. And advancement to follow. Amen? Come on. I like this right here. I want to share this with you. And I'm getting ready to close. We had this in a newsletter a month or two ago. It's called Somebody, Anybody, and Nobody. Mm. I'm sure you've heard it before, but it won't hurt none to refresh your memory. There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. But everybody thought anybody could do it. But nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could do. Yeah. You hear that? Amen. Anybody... There is a work for you to be that you can do. That's right. He, Paul, and I'm not going to read it. I'm going to give you the scriptures. I want you to read them. But the Bible compares the church to a body. With the head being Christ. And the rest of us being members of the body. Now I don't know about you this morning. But no matter how insignificant my pinky thinks it is. I don't want to lose it. When I had that piece of wood in my hand. For the two months that it was there. I realized how something so small could affect the whole body. Right. When it finally came out, Brother Sleece, it was a half inch long. It was a piece of the tree that I stabbed my hand on. Mm. But a half inch piece of wood mm. caused me all kind of trouble. Mm -hmm. All right. I could things that I normally would do with this hand no. because it because this hand couldn't do it. It was more work on this hand. Yeah. If we've got members of the body that ain't working, they're just dead weight, it causes the other parts of the body to have to work harder. Wow. Brother Dave, you know what I'm talking about. When that leg's not as strong, it puts more pain and more labor on the other side of your body. That's the way it is with the body of Christ. We've got a lot of members doing nothing, a lot of members being nothing but dead weight, and the members that are doing something having to pull it around. Amen? Yeah. Having to put it, making it harder to do the work because we don't have enough people that will say, hey, I'm going to get away from the eating table for a little while and I'm going to go work in the field. Come on. Have you ever, you work in a factory and when two or three people call in, it don't just affect them, it affects you because you've got to do not just your job but their job too. Yeah. That's the way it is in the church today. Amen. That's why the pastor sometimes, I don't have to now, thank God, but that's why the pastor sometimes has to clean the commode. Yeah. Even though he's got a house full of people, yeah. nobody wants to do it. That's right. So it's either the pastor leaves it and it looks like a public john or he has to come clean it. Right. Amen. Come on. Or the carpet, or whatever the case may be. Amen. That's why so many times it seems like you have too much stuff to do is because we ain't got enough stuff, people doing the stuff. Right. Amen. Come we on. don't have enough workers. And it ain't because there's not jobs. Our unemployment rate in the church is not because of the lack of jobs, it's because of the lack of workers. Right. We got people standing idle. Where was they at? They was at Walmart. All right. Found them idle in the marketplace. Yeah. We used to have a marketplace in Owensboro. I think they got one in Madisonville. We got Walmart over there. So I said he found them standing idle in Walmart. Why ain't you working? Mm. Spend more time. Oh, somebody came out with a song a while back. It's called the Walmart Church or something. And they were praying and they were saying about bless this money and bless Walmart because they're going to be getting part of my tithe. Amen. Mm. 
need some workers. That's right. The harvest is plenteous. Yes. The laborers are few. Here's some of the positions that are open. We need some people to pray. That's but Brother Billy, I can't sing. Yeah, but can you pray? Right. I don't know anybody that can't pray. Amen. Amen. That's true. Even people that are bedridden and have no movement can't even speak. Right. Can pray. Amen. What's your excuse? Mm -hmm. Don't have time. Maybe you don't think prayer is important enough. Amen. If you ain't the way it one wearing the suit and the tie and standing in the front of the crowd every Sunday morning, maybe you think it ain't worth your effort to do anything. Mm -hmm. I got news for you, honey. Prayer is as important as any job that there is that needs to be done. Right. We need some burden carriers. I ain't talking about Brother Winford neither. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people that will get under the burden for somebody and not quit praying until they see them saved. Right. I remember when I was a kid, burden carriers were plenteous. Right. Or it seemed they were in our church anyway. Because mm -hmm. I can remember an old saint getting up on her feet and saying, I ain't been able to eat all day. I ain't been able to do nothing but pray. Please pray for my kids. Please pray for my neighbor. Please pray for my friend. Somebody's lost and undone and on their way to hell and I care. All right. The problem with the church today is the church don't care hardly. Amen. If it ain't, if it ain't, they ain't something in it for them. Mm -hmm. They ain't got a lot of time. They can give their boss 40, 50, 60 hours a week. They can't give God two hours on Sunday morning. That's right. Bro. They can't give God two hours on Wednesday night. Right. Because they're too busy. It's their only day off. Amen. Well, don't worry. You're fixing to get a long, hot vacation. Mm -hmm. Amen. You're going to have plenty of days off, and then you wish you'd have used the days off you had here on earth for something else. That's I ain't telling you to quit your job, but I'm telling you you can use your time more wisely and quit putting God on the back burner and start doing something for Him instead of everything for yourself. And I ain't talking... Listen, I ain't throwing this at you people here. We're preaching to far more people than what's in this church this morning. If you feel that something hits you, I won't apologize for it. Because I think every one of us, including this preacher that's doing the preaching, can do more than what we're doing. We need, to, we need for somebody to care about the harvest. That's right. We need some people to be a light. Can you do that? Amen. Say, Brother Billy, how do I do that? You just go outside those doors and live like you do when you're in here. All right. You don't live one way in church and use all kinds of filthy language and listen and do all kinds of stuff on the outside you wouldn't right. do in church. Amen. You show the love of Jesus to everybody that you meet. Right. Or you try to anyway. Come on. At least put forth an effort. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad my day is. And I don't mean to dump my stuff on y'all this morning. But if I was up all night, if I had a terrible morning, I still come into this church, get behind this pulpit, and put on a smile. Amen. Amen. What, how long would you want me for your pastor if I came in? Well, I'm just, I can't hardly make it no more. I'm, yeah, there was a sign that on one of the little cartoons we did said, we're all doomed to get over it. That was the pastor's sermon. <laughs> How would, well, how would you go out here feeling better if I told you this morning there ain't no hope? No, but i got to get up here no matter what's going on in my life and tell you there's hope because I know there's hope. Right. You've got to go out beside, outside those doors and regardless of what's going on in your life, when you run into somebody that's lost and under you, you've got to tell them there's hope. Right. You've got to share Jesus with them when the door's open for you to share Him. Amen? Amen. I'm hurrying. <clears throat> I knew it wasn't going to be quick. Hallelujah. We need somebody more interested in a soul than they are a dollar. Got any takers for that? Amen. We need somebody who don't feel put out or put upon when God wants them to do a work. Right. Have you ever seen somebody that just, well, I guess I'll do it. Mm. It's an honor to be a part of the body of Christ. Mm. It's an honor to work for the kingdom. It's an honor to be a laborer in the field. But we don't act like it. We act like it's a labor to be a laborer. It's a burden. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. You say, well, I can't preach. Yeah, but you can help support those who can. Amen. If you can't do it monetarily, you can do it in other ways. Right. Oh my goodness, I'm going to skip over that part right there because that's very liable. Make somebody mad. <laughs> we need somebody who feels convicted when they rob from God mm. and don't feel justified in doing so. You find them all the time. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't pay my tithe. I don't give an offering. I give mine to the salvation army. Well, that's good, but that ain't where you're supposed to put your tithe. Mm -hmm. Amen. I take mine and pay somebody's light bill with it. Well, that's good. 
but that ain't where you're supposed to put your tithe. Well, I can't afford. That's the main one. That's the one you get the most. You don't find very many people paying somebody's light bills. Amen. But you get a lot of people saying, I can't afford to give my tithe. I, I can't afford to. You can't afford not to. Amen. We need somebody to show the love and the compassion of Christ. Right. We need somebody to get addicted to the ministry. Do you remember Paul spoke to some people there in the Bible? He said that I would that you'd be addicted to the ministry of the saints. And that's not an exact quote, but that's what he was teaching. Look up that, those words, addicted to the ministry. We need some people. we got plenty of people addicted. Amen. Oh, they're addicted to cigarettes. They're addicted to dip. They're addicted to alcohol. They're addicted to you know uh, caffeine. They're addicted to pills. They're addicted, whatever the problem is. Right. Got plenty of people addicted, but I ain't never seen nobody. Oh, I just can't wait to do something for God. Yeah. I'm having withdrawals this week because I haven't done enough for God. Amen. Yeah. We have withdrawals when we ain't got our Pepsi. Amen. Yeah. But we don't have withdrawals when we ain't got nothing for God this week. Matter of fact, we consider that just a week off. Amen. Yeah. I've just enjoyed this. I ain't really done nothing this week. Well, you ought to be having withdrawals. Amen. We ought to be like, I, I'm not doing enough. I, I gotta do something for God. I gotta help somebody. I gotta pray for somebody. I gotta lift somebody up in prayer. I gotta do something for the preacher. I throw it in. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. We need somebody like Nehemiah mm -hmm. that while he's working realizes that there's no reason for the work to cease. Right. But the Mike preached a powerful message a couple of Tuesdays ago on that. Mm -hmm. Why should the some people came to him and said, Come on down off the wall and quit working? He said, Why should the work cease? Right. We need some people with the mindset of Nehemiah. We need some people like Paul when he was knocked down on the road to Damascus. He said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Mm. We need some people like Peter that stood up in the midst of Jerusalem and preached the gospel and seen 5,000 people saved on the day of Pentecost. We need some people like David when he went down and he heard the giant bellowing out all the blasphemies. He said, he said I'll fight him. Mm. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And his brothers said, hey, keep your mouth shut. And he turns to them long enough to say, is there not a cause? Then he turns his back on them and goes and does what God wants him to do. Aww. There may be some brothers that you may have to look at and say, is there not a cause? Yeah. Is there not a work to be done? Why should I quit? Why should I cease? We need some Davids today. Amen? Amen. That's true. We need some people like Amos. Wow. I ain't talking about the guy who makes the cookies. I was not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but God called me and I went. Right. That's what we need. We need some people like Abraham that would get up out of their country and follow the leading of God to a place where he had no idea where he was going. But he did so out of obedience to God. See, these all kinds of positions. Mm -hmm. We need some spirit-filled preachers yes, sir. to teach us right from wrong. We need some old-fashioned seekers who pray all night long. Amen? We need some good gospel singing like Brother Dave did up here this morning on the guitar under the anointing of the Spirit of God that will touch somebody's heart and move them and not just move their feet to the beat, but it will touch them and change them with the power of God. We need some people that will work. Amen. Help wanted. Absolutely. Now hiring all positions. Come on. Amen. My goodness, we need some people that'll drop the seed. That's right. We need some people that'll make the hole. Right. We need some people that'll cover it up. Yeah. We need some people that'll water it. Yeah. If I was getting together a bunch of people to work in my field today and I named off all those jobs, surely you would think, hey, well, I can do that. Mm -hmm. A kid can take a stick and make a hole. Right. Surely I can do that. No, but we stand around Walmart idle. Yeah. What are you standing here for? Ain't no work for me. Oh, yes, there is. Come on. Yes, there is. Come and if you ask the master of the field, the husbandman of the vineyard, he will tell you what you can do. That's right, brother. Jesus said to let your light so shine before men mm -hmm. so that you, they would see your good works and your Father in heaven would be glorified. Yeah. There's a work for you to do, Brother David. Amen. There's a work for you, Brother Sleese. There's a work for you, Brother Rod. Sister Susan, there's a work for you this morning. Mama, there's a work for you. Brother Tyler, there's a work for you. There's a work for Brother Bill and Sister Nancy and for Mike and for Lori and for everybody that is a part of the body of Christ. There's something for you to do. Amen. Quit using that old excuse, I can't do nothing, because yes, you can. Right. No matter how much you claim you can't do anything, mm -hmm. there's some people that I can't reach, but you can. Amen. They're your friends. Yeah. They'll listen to you about Jesus. They won't listen to me. Yeah. They'll let, they'll let your light shine into their darkness. All right. A lot of them will block me out. Amen. Everybody.
can do something Amen. in this work. All kinds of positions open. And I want to give you these scriptures. You can write them down. Might pick up on this next week. I don't know. But 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 6 and 7. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. Romans, the 12th chapter. You can read that whole chapter there in Romans. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We find, and all of these have to do with the body of Christ and all of us being members. And all of us having a work, a part. If Paul even says it, and this is not a quote, but Paul even says, can the, can the eye say he has no use for the ears? Amen? Right. It would be like, can the hand say, well, I don't need you feet. Yeah. Well, you can't walk on your hands. You have to have your feet. That's right. Would it be like your feet saying, I don't need these toes. Try to stand up without no toes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. A lot of jobs. A lot of members. A lot of positions. Amen. Hallelujah. God's looking for laborers. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. That's right. Let's get let's sure let's eat at the Father's table. Mm -hmm. Let's get nourished up, but then let's get up and go work. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Go work in the field. Hallelujah. Somebody else have something this morning before we go.